Hey everyone, Amitabh with Mental Love here. Just wanted to uh, make a quick video for you about uh, about thought and about suffering and about happiness. Um, so I just had a meditation and I, you know my mind has been uh, I haven't been as consistent with my meditation as I was. Um, I did a eight day retreat in home about twelve and a half hours a day about a month ago. And I let my meditation practice slip quite a bit. So I had uh, some some pain in my hip. I hurt my hip. Um, and it was really hard for me to sit. And then I had an ear infection. So I kind of let my practice slip. I, I didn't meditate because I just didn't feel like it. And, and uh, my hip hurt. So I felt like I was going to injure it. Even though I probably should have just done some walking meditation instead. Anyhow, so the mind can get revved up, right? It can get really, uh, you know, they call it sort of backsliding. Uh, it's a Christian kind of term. It's not, not just Christian, though. It's like when you make some progress and then you kind of slide back down the hill. So, so we, we can backslide. We can kind of fall backwards and, you know, make some progress, you know, two steps forward, one back. Sometimes it's one step forward and two back. We got to be careful about that. So I was just sitting and... Uh, the thing I, I noticed is, I, I can't remember exactly what the thought was, but I had a thought, and it was really pulling. It was a really pulling thought. It was really, um, you know, I think it was even maybe an angry thought. And uh, I, I used using mindfulness. I was actually, I actually intended on having an object for my meditation. I was going to use loving kindness. But I just sort of sat there and, and watched my mind, and, and then it would get pulled out. And then I would pull back from the content and look at it. And so at one point during the meditation, there was this particularly um, strong thought with a lot of emotion. And uh, I believe it was, I believe it was a, a thought of, that was filled with anger. And the thing I noticed is I, I looked at it and while the thought you know, sucked me in, um, and, and it felt like, you know, there was all this emotion there. When I really looked at it, when I really pulled back from it and looked at it and, and I, and I kind of reflected on it and saw it, observed it, I noticed there wasn't really any emotion there at all. It was, it was just, it was just like words on a page almost and I think this is really important to look at our thoughts and really see what they are you know I really realized and I saw this in my mind you know it appears like it was in my mind like in the in the head area because we have this perception that our minds are in our head it's just this perceptual thing because our visions here and our brains there so it appeared you know in <laughs> it's somewhere in this area <laughs> and I, as I observed it as I looked at it, it didn't take very long it was, it was pretty weird, really quick all the emotion was gone as I saw it clearly for what it was it was just like a leaf passing by it d doesn't have any emotion it's just a leaf passing by it was just it was just a thought it was there and I was just you know, fixated on it. <clears throat> and as I saw it, it melted away. And this is one of the things that that we should be aware of. Um, there are these things called the five hindrances. I'll try to list them for you. Uh, they're um, sensual desire, or you could say wanting. Uh, ill will, or you could say uh, hatred or anger or not wanting. So sensual desire, ill will. Um, there's uh, basically like agitation. So um, is that actually what do they actually call it? Um, hmm. Sloth and torpor, restlessness and remorse, and doubt. Okay, so restlessness and remorse you could say is like agitation. So 
restlessness in the mind. Uh, sloth and torpor is like um, tiredness. Uh, not not tiredness. It's like um, dullness in the mind. Sleepiness, dullness, and then doubt. Doubt is uh, skeptical doubt. So you can be doubting yourself, or it could be. Um, I mean, when the Buddha taught it, I think it's really you know doubting that uh, the path. You know, doubting that the path will work. Um, the practice that the practice that he prescribed works. And it does work. So when these five hindrances are in the mind, um, so you could say, it's almost like, so I'm really sleepy because I, I was up last night really late. So you can almost say it's like uh, wanting and not wanting, too much energy, restlessness or remorse, and not enough energy. So there's a bit of sloth and torpor, uh, sloth, sloth and torpor, you know, probably in my mind right now. Um, certainly in the body, that's for sure, because I was up till like almost two a.m. Super tired. Um, so as these things arise, uh, I, I've been listening to some monks, and they say, you know, once you see it, if it's a hindrance, it will disappear immediately. But it's not until you actually really see it. If there's still attachment there, you haven't seen it. So it's like, it's kind of like this, you know, it's the difference between being burned by a flame and being a few feet back and looking at it. You can still feel the warmth, but the further back you get from it, the more clearly you can see it without being, you know, affected by it. So you can sort of observe things without being harmed by them. So... Until you have that perspective, until you're able to willing, willingly detach from the thought, it's still able to burn you, so you won't have, won't, it won't fully let go until you let go of it. You have to let go of it to see it. So, it's, uh, it's really, really interesting. I just wanted to share this idea with you that, that we can actually observe thought, see what it really is, and... And there's so much freedom, <laughs> like really, really amazing freedom in seeing thought and really realizing how insubstantial it is. That was the one thing I really got from this meditation was I saw how insubstantial the thought was and then it was, it was gone. It was, it was just, you know, almost like a scribble on a page. You know, it's not even a word on a page. It's because a word can have meaning. It's just like a scribble there. It just doesn't, it, you know, we wouldn't pay attention to it. It's not really that meaningful. Oh. Anyways, and it, and, it, and it evokes feelings. So, so you have thoughts and you have feelings, right? So the one thing that's really important to notice that I don't think many people do realize is that there is really no... <clears throat> I guess there is something called emotion. I mean, there's there's a thought, and it and it creates a mental charge, um, a mental feeling. But there's physical feelings as well. They're two separate things. The physical feeling and the mental feeling they can affect each other, they can influence each other, but they're not one and the same. So it's really good to separate these things and realize this is a thought. It's a mental. Um, mental phrase or it's a mental movie or it's a mental picture but it doesn't necessarily have any feeling in it it might have it might be attached to it it might affect your mood but it's really hard to say is that a, is that a feeling so so i like to like separate them the body and the mind and really look at it um but either way if you observe your thoughts and you're willing to realize that, first of all, you didn't choose for it to come up. And if, it didn't, if you didn't choose for it to come up, it's not necessarily yours. So you can let it go. You can look at it and observe it and be free from it. So anyway, it's just random video. Not much focus, but <laughs> I just wanted to share this with you. I love you and you have a good day.